T.J. Hooker is the name. But you don't have to lose any sleep wondering what the T.J. stands for. As far as you're concerned, my first name is Sergeant. I don't know what your individual reasons are for joining the police commission's new recruitment program. But I have one reason for being here. There's a war going on out there on our streets. People are scared, and they have a right to be. The body count is high. Homicide, assault, forcible rape, burglary, armed robbery, all up. Street savvy hoods have no fear. Not of the courts, not of prison. When a bus does stick, we house them, give them color TV and their wives on weekends. If that makes sense to you, then you and I are about to have a problem because I'm your instructor here and I love to weed out airheads and marshmallows. I've got a job to do, to test your mental and physical fiber. I'm gonna work your tails off to save your lives and maybe the lives of some of your fellow officers. This is no picnic, no summer camp. Target range, classroom self-defense will cover everything you had in pre-training and more. But the real world is on the street and that's what this new program is all about. On the job training. You got the dedication, you got the guts, you'll make it. You don't, I don't want you. Attend, hut! Hit the barracks and stow your gear and hit the track running at 0900. You got it? Yes, yes sir. I don't hear you. Yes, sir! Dismissed! On the double, come on! I wonder what Sergeant Hooker eats for breakfast. <laughs> Recruits. Yeah, he was breathing fire, weren't he? Weren't he? <laughs> Where'd you go to school, pal? Who said country went to school? <laughs> I graduated with honors. Rome High. In Italy? Georgia. Why does my accent sound Italian? <laughs> Excuse me, fellas, but do you see what I see? <laughs> you talking about the monogram on Romano's shorts? No, see, that's so he knows who he is in case he wakes up suddenly in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say to such no style, no class sartorial misfits? Granger? You look like you were wardrobe at a thrift shop. What's the matter? They didn't have clothing stores near NYU? None that sold silk shorts. They come in different colors? Hate to tell you this, guys, but we're late in two minutes. That's right. Let's get to it. That's right. Hey, 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 let's go. Why do I get the feeling I'm headed into a sudden death overtime? And I'd feel likewise if I was going to be locked away from something like your wife. Something like what? Hey, no offense, Jess. I just meant that I see your picture in your locker, and she's a very beautiful lady. Yeah, ain't she, though? I left a jury panting for the prosecution's closing argument, Lacey. And I ducked network cameras waiting for me outside the courtroom to get here. And you leave me to cool my heels. Hey, well, what is it with you, anyway? I thought I gave you a couple of days off to get your act together. Look, when Jess was working the pipeline, I, I needed a job, and you gave me one. I was lonely, and you were interesting to be with. But it just got out of hand, Eric. You've got a lot of growing up to do, Lacey. You and that ex-jock husband of yours have been in a downhill run since he legged it for the winning score in the Rose Bowl and you shook your pom-poms on national TV. Look, if Jess hadn't busted his knee, oh, we... pro ball, right? A crutch, Lacey. The past. Same as if I whined about losing the election to end up deputy DA instead of head honcho. Nobody's whining. And you'll run again and win. Jess can't. Jess, who's been in insurance peddled used cars, worked construction in the pipeline, always chasing the pot at the end of the rainbow, and mostly live off what you brought home. He had some problems to work out. And now he's going to be a cop. And you think because he's finally off the road, your sweet-scented sheets are going to be burning up. He's going to be living at the barracks for a while. But that'll change. What'll change is your tab at the drugstore. After you spend a few weeks watching the sun come up, wondering where he is and whether some acid freak got a midnight itch and blew him away, You'll zonk yourself out just to get through the night. And when that happens, 
When you start navigating through the day like a zombie, don't expect me to carry you. We're in debt, Eric. I need my job. I hear there's a new girl in the steno pool, Lacey. Takes dynamite dictation, they say. Types like she's possessed. Just graduated from City College, and I'm told she knows what team spirit is. She was a cheerleader. Up over this fence. Watch yourself. The suspect's right there, right there. Land square. Keep down. Keep down. He's going to be right at you. Keep his arms in. Go, 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 go. All right, next. All right. Keep down. That's good. On your way. Come on, English. Up and over. Up and over. The suspect's right there. Never, never, never turn your back on the suspect. Down low. Low so. Get those arms in. In, in, in. Blow your body. Now he's right there. Don't get up. Move it. Move it. Move it. Let's see him go. Get the lid out. Let's see him move those legs. Come on. Come on. Move. 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 Pay the price. Better to bleed here than on the streets. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Shut that kid up. Well, you know, if you get caught with that gun, your parole is just going to be... Shut up! You promised you gave me your word that you'd go out and look for work. Where? At the car wash out pumping gas for plantation wages? Nothing wrong with that. If you ain't afraid to get your hands dirty... Don't you smart mouth me now! I don't like smart mouth! Gee, looks like the honeymoon's over. Whit, I don't, I don't want you running around with him. You're gonna end up right back in Attica with numbers right across your chest. Yeah, well, I'm tired of going through life with somebody's foot on my neck. Now me and Travis are going out and make a move. Let's go. Romano's the name, love. Romano, huh? Okay, you can call me service. Vince. Move it, move it. Move How about it. if I call you a cab? Mm, I love a lady with a sense of humor. Buzz off, Romano. Oh, she's crazy about you, Romano. Yeah, I know. This isn't the high school social sandbaggers. Five more laps. Hit it. Yes, yes, sir. No pain, no gain. When you pull your weapons, it's not the movies. You're not pulling it to wing someone. When you pull it, you're shooting to kill. Point shooting is the kind of firing you're likely to get into. It's very close. It's you or him. No aim. Speed counts more than accuracy. The gun is simply shoved in the direction of the target and fired. You draw quickly, crouch, point, squeeze. Most perpetrators are right-handed and are not trained. Therefore, when they fire at you, their guns will jump slightly to your right, and their bullets tend to pass over your right shoulder. So, before you get into your combat crouch, take a half step to your left. Sir. Stranger. What happens if you run into a left-handed shooter who's been trained? In that case, Granger, if you don't take a half step to your right, you'll get a cop's funeral with full honors. We don't get no respect in this community. That's the problem. Cash is what we need. 
with it comes respect. Dig? Yeah, yeah, sure, respect. Pull over. Couple of people come out of that fancy restaurant. So? So let's take them. Okay. You are. Yes. Oh, with you. <laughs> hey, what? hey, William, what do you guys want here, huh? I want your cash. Okay. I want your jewel. You the first. Okay, anything. More stuff is in there, okay? All right, what's this now? Seventeen dollars? There is no more. You know? I meant to get to the bank today. I just, I, I never did. There's some credit cards in there. Just, just, just take them, will you, please? I don't want no damn credit cards. Now I want your cash. I'm sorry, I don't have any more. Seventeen dollars. You're sorry, all right. more cash. Two officers on patrol at 2 a.m. Observe a man standing in the shadows across the street from a 24-hour market that had suffered three previous robberies. The officers approached the suspect, observed a bulge on his shirt. With his assent, they conducted a pat search. The bulge turned out to be a loaded 38. When he was jailed, it was learned that he was out on bail on two armed market robberies. What charges could be filed? McNeil. No crime had been committed, but he should have been charged with the felony. Sanders. Ex-con with a gun, sir. Correct. Except the judge decided that the defendant's constitutional rights had been violated, that the detention wrongfully invaded his privacy, and a week later, the suspect turned up again at 2 a.m., another market. Only this time, there were no officers to interrupt his rhythm. He blew away the manager and the 17-year-old checker. That's Hollywood, Romano. Up we go. Get the lad out. Pain, let's go. Up and over. And over you go. Let's go. Come on now. No gain without pain. Search and seizure law is still thrown. Yeah. You got to be a Supreme Court justice to understand which way is up. Mm -hmm. Class before yours, I was given my usual bid on search and seizures and stops, pat downs, searches and house entry, and the um, restrictions that the courts have hung on us. And there was this Italian kid. You remind me of him, Romano. Yeah, they all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> you wear monogram shorts like Romano? Hey, mouth, let's start to talk. Bright kid. <laughs> Eager to learn. His first week out was his last. He was in pursuit of a rape suspect. And I wonder how much of the kid's mind was concentrating on legalities, how and when to tell the suspect to stop, what he could properly say, whether he could draw his weapon. And alone at 5 o'clock in the morning, what he could legally do next. I wonder what legal rules were going through the suspect's mind when he pumped six point-blank slugs into a police officer. You Catholic Romano? Yes, sir. 
You know what I missed at the mass that they had for the kid? Latin. I'd like to hear Latin again instead of everything in English. Yeah. What about doctors who make house calls? And repairmen who know how to fix things. And ball players who hustle. And boxers who get carried out of the ring instead of quitting because of stomach cramps. And what about the death penalty for scum who take a human life and snuff it out like it's so much garbage? seen the past, gentlemen. And it works. in Portland. Well, this is us that they're talking about here, but they got it wrong. This ain't the way it happened, man. That liquor store will be a lock. Yeah, all that trouble for 17 bucks. Man, do you want to eat or what? Eat? No, let's just go take somebody off. Hooker scares me a little. What do you mean? He reminds me of cops who were breaking heads in the 60s. Are we going to get into your Berkeley politics again? David, it's just that I don't think Hooker's way is necessarily the right way. And I guess I'm worried that you're buying the whole package. What I'm buying, Susan, is his dedication. And hey, I'm open for anything else that makes sense. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble, you know? I never had a problem with the obstacle course in high school. And I've been shooting a gun since I was 10, hunting with my father. I don't worry about it. I saw guys now wearing sharpshooter badges. It still froze sometimes. You just press a little bit too hard, son. It'll work itself out. She can't stay away from me. So, how's it going? How's it going? Yeah. I figure it's got to be going super good from where I'm standing because you are looking fine tonight. And I thought maybe you might want to glide on up to the dance floor and show off those new jeans. Thanks. But I'm not much of a dancer. So we don't win first place in the dance contest. Nah, it's fast music. I hate fast dancing. Look, I'm not asking for a lifetime commitment here. Will you give me a break? You're destroying my image. I didn't know you had an image. OK. OK. I'll back up and start over if you want. All right, Romano. One boogie for your image. And that's it. Will you call me Monday and let me know how it's going? If I can. Could be out on the streets for the first time. I'll have a few other things on my mind. And I know it's not something you want to think about, Jenny, so don't. How do I not? You're going out there with a gun, trained to use it, set into circumstances where you might have to. If you're not terrified, I am.
an extension on the loan. It'll cost, but at least it'll give us some breathing room with these Shylocks. Well, your old teammates are great. I mean, first they get you into a pie-in-the-sky scheme that goes bust, and then they get you alone with guys who are under indictment. <laughs> with our credit lace, where else was I gonna get the cash that quick? I tried to reach you earlier. Called a few times around seven. I got hung up at work. I tried there too, about 6.30. I guess I was on my way to the car. Look, I'm sorry I didn't get your call. Maybe I can still make it over there. No, no need. I, uh, I don't want you driving around alone this late. I'll just see you this weekend. Get a good night's sleep, babe. Love you and miss you. I miss you too, Jess. Well, next time he parks on the lawn. <laughs> Tell me about your day. Fine. I can't find nothing to watch until I leave. Hi, Daddy. Hello, boy, Tom. You know what time it is, Hooker? Chrissy, it's past your bedtime. Can I read a book, Daddy? Yeah, one, but then lights out. Uh, we're already an hour late, friend. Uh, could I see you in the kitchen for a minute, please? We'll try not to inconvenience you any further, Harvey. New wallpaper. You smell like a still. What was wrong with the old wallpaper? I'm here waiting to go out, and you're in some saloon with your face in the bourbon on the rocks. Business. Right. I'd like the old wallpaper. You don't live here anymore. You know, I think about that a lot. Do you? First of every month, when the mortgage is due. You're late with the alimony check again. I have what your Dr. Feelgood dentist friend would call a cash flow problem. They've got you in a ringer over that street shooting, don't they? It's resolving itself, but my paychecks have magically slowed to a crawl. Can the DA do that? Did Harvey drink all my bourbon? He looks more like a strawberry daiquiri man. You could have retired on disability after that bullet skewered you. You lost part of your stomach, and you still have the lead in your back to remind you whenever it rains. Nobody but you wanted you to go back to full duty. What the hell are you trying to prove? Fran, for God's sake, I'm going to miss the whole party. I'll meet you in the car, Harvey. There's uh, bourbon in the bag and cold chicken in the fridge. You'll send the check when you can? I'll send it when I can. You like it, Hooker. You like living on the edge. I like doing my job. <laughs> when I divorced you, I should have named the department as co-respondent.
Hey, man. Them two dudes look like money. Yeah, that's the kind I like. Let's go find out who their tailor is. Eric Saxon and word on the Palermo case. Uh, Mr. Saxon, do you think you'll get a murder conviction? And that's for the jury to decide. You're also in charge of the investigation into the South Side officer involved killing, the case of Sergeant T.J. Hooker. When do you expect a decision on that one? A formal statement will be released tomorrow. But the gist of it is that the shooting was deemed justified. However, the officer involved will receive a reprimand and has already undergone stress and psychological counseling. Does that mean that Sergeant Hooker is going to be permitted to go back to street duty? Oh, we will. We just want it known that the district attorney's office does not condone a quick trigger when other means will suffice. Mr. So Saxon. Deputy D.A. Saxon seems confident of a conviction in the Palermo case and says that in a controversial killing, Sergeant T.J. Hooker has been exonerated from guilt. Or has he? I'm Kate Sutton reporting from the criminal courts building. Hooker. Sergeant, David McNeil. Yes, McNeil, what do you want? Passes have been scratched. Everything's busting loose. We got a gang war on the south side. We got a freeway sniper attack. And we got another double shooting outside of a restaurant. M.O.? Same as before. Victims apparently offered no resistance, but uh, they were gunned down anyway. Witnesses? None. Condition of the victims? One DOA at Central Receiving. One critical. Lovely. Tell Captain Sheridan we'll hit the streets at 7 a.m. And McNeil, ready or not, get set to wear the blue. We're on, gentlemen. We roll at 7 a.m. Sweet dreams. Yeah. Sweet dreams. So how you feel, Granger? In what way? A lot of years back, my first day out, I had butterflies. Nothing's changed then. My stomach feels like 40 miles of bad road. <laughs> A little on the edge is good. Keep it that way. You get too comfortable, you make mistakes. Four Adam Seven, Four Adam Seven, Three Three Seven South Wilbur. See the woman. Ambulance shooting. Two Eleven suspect. Gang related. Code two. Four Adam Seven. Roger. Let's go. Cancel the ambulance on this one. You find out what went down, I'll call for the wagon. Where the hell have you been? We called you 40 minutes ago. Callate, Maria. That will be enough. You want to give us the details for our report? When I looked up, they were in front of me with a gun. Gang members, purple stallions. We have been robbed by them five times in two years. First time, my father was shot. Killed, for no reason. Killed right in front of his grandchildren's eyes. And this time? 
three of them. I was alone. Maria was in the back. I, I was frightened, but I remembered what happened to my Juan, and I knew, I knew what had to be done. You see, we used to know the officer who walked the beat here. Have you been on patrol here long? My first day, ma'am. You from around here? New York, the Bronx. You come here to, to be a policeman? Lawyer. We don't need any more lawyers. We need more cops. Just to be so safe here. We could walk, shop, day, night. Well, one of them reached over to take the money in the register. The other one raised his gun at me. My husband's gun was under the counter. I never touched it before today. Just before I fired, they see the gun, and they look so surprised. Wagon's on its way. Backup's already here. We have to roll on another call. Here's the weapon. I, I know that you policemen, you, you do your best, but is it a losing battle? We have to go. What you said, ma'am, about a losing battle? I wouldn't be working at it if I thought we couldn't improve things. We work together. It'll get better. You're from out here, McNeil? Born and raised. I went to school about four blocks from here. What about you, Romano? South Philly all the way, Sarge. Lived under the L tracks. I didn't see the sun until I was 12. <laughs> Mercedes just blew the red light. Pull him over. I uh, already gave it the office, boys. It's very humorous, sir. Do you have a license? Or did you decide to practice a while before applying for one? What's the big problem? Well, you ran your basic red light. You gotta be kidding. Three cops? One of my public enemy number one. Do we look like we're kidding, sir? Romano, call it in. Right. May I see your license, please? To be straight with you, I was in a mite of a hurry. I was running low on diesel and trying to scoot to a gas station before I run drier in that. But what are you doing? He's got a gun! He's got a gun! Where? Up on the roof! He said he's gonna shoot somebody. Get that man down! A couple people. Get down and stay down. You know? My head, he's flipped out! <laughs> That could be our sniper. Let's go. Ah! Romano, take the fire escape. Make me a new cover.
What's the matter, baby? You okay? Sure, no problem. Well, take them downstairs. You call it in. Romano, call it in. All right, Sarge. in the trunk. This chicken is like chewing on a steel belted radio. Try some salt. Should have had a burger. Oh, I should have had a burger. So you want to do that liquor store tonight or what? Well, this place is just begging to be taken. It's just begging here. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Let's do the liquor store tonight. We'll come back here on Saturday. All right. You want a burger and fries? We just get him to go and let's get out of here. He was trying to jump a curb with his bike, fell, and broke a finger. But Tommy's okay now, right? Now he's okay. When they were setting the bone, he was in pain asking oh. for you. Didn't they give him a shot or something? He wouldn't take anything. They said if it was you, you wouldn't. Well, maybe I better go in and wake him up and have a talk. No, no. School tomorrow. He'll never go back to sleep. Well, tell him that I love him and uh, I'll talk to him tomorrow and he'll survive. That's not exactly the point. What I was saying was, in a moment of crisis, as usual, you were nowhere to be found. Oh, You've already divorced me. What else do you want? Blood. I'm fresh out. Try the Red Cross. Hooker. What is it? I'm having enough trouble taking care of myself and my partner. I didn't do a very good job on that. You can't blame yourself for his death. Well, inside, I know that. I didn't ask for this assignment. Well, we need cops. I agree with the program, but... Something happened? Sniper. The boys did very well. Except... What? At the end, I looked into this kid's eyes. He's, he's gonna make a good cop. But for a moment there, I thought he was gonna crack. But he didn't, right? So then what is tearing you up? No. 
sending untrained men into battle when they shouldn't have been. This isn't the Mekong Delta anymore, Hooker. You've got to get that nightmare out of your mind. But every time I look at those guys, I have the same feelings I had then. The casualties, the mistakes that were made by men who broke under battle conditions. Things happened that nobody was proud of. I can put the past behind me, Fran. But I don't want the responsibility of mistakes and casualties that'll be part of my future. You'll do your best. And I know you already have. Because you always do. Would you like to spend the night? So the chief asked Hooker why he's not signed up for the voluntary weekend jogging program. And Hooker says he gave up jogging because he kept spilling his drink. <laughs> Whoa, pull over. Can't take it anymore. I got to hit the powder room. <laughs> you got a serious kidney problem, Brian. Maybe we ought to take up a collection, get you a transplant. You hit my age, country boy. You might need one. Gonna call the wife while I'm at it. Just stay cool till I get back. Stay cool. Shoot, you think we was in the fourth grade. Yeah, well, you'll have your day in the sun. Meantime, though, they got us on a leash with a short chain. They go over there having some problems. Yeah, well, I don't know. He's got his hood up. Maybe it's time for his 100,000-mile checkup. <laughs> I think I'll go see if he needs some help. Hey, Brian said to stay put. We're sworn to protect and serve. Remember? Excuse me. Can I lend you a hand? Descriptions, the M.O., the car, all fit what we have on the suspects in the restaurant killings. Only now they're shooting cops. Nurse Bartlett, Paul, Sarah, Keontu, 14. How are they, Sarge? McNeil got hit on the shoulder. Nothing you won't recover. What about country? Country didn't make it. Does he have any family? Uh, no family out here. <clears throat> Georgia, I, I think he said they were all there. I'll make sure that they're not of them. What happened? If there was a liquor store robbery, why didn't they call for assistance? Brian said it happened too fast. 
He went to help what he thought was a motorist in distress. He left the car. He disobeyed Brian's instructions. They'll get a cop's funeral because he made a mistake. A dumb, stupid mistake. Yeah, well, some of us aren't as smart as you, Sarge. That's right, English. Not all of you are. If you were, I wouldn't have to work my tail off to drum elementary procedure into your six skulls. I wouldn't have to spell it out by the numbers that that badge is a target. And I wouldn't have to feel that a potentially good cop is lying there on a slab. Because I didn't teach him well enough. Watch, Lace. I have to get back to the barracks with the guys. Jess, I... I know. I know. You're worried about me. But Hook is right, Lacey. It was Country's mistake. Country was human. Are you telling me you're not? Jess's friends, country, he died. I want to talk to you, Eric. This time we really need to talk. Saturday English? Yes, sir, Sarge, but I'm not proud of popping off at the hospital the other day. I was just a little... We were all upset. Yeah, but everything you said I know was meant for me. I know you don't think I'm going to be able to cut it, but I have to make it, you know? Why? My father, my uncle, their father, all cops. They're looking over your shoulder. Yeah, I guess you can put it that way. Family thing, you know? Four out of three, four out of three, six, six. South Main, 211 in progress, code 3. That's right down the street from where country Neil bought it. Or Adam 3, roger. Hit it. Officer Roberts, from Southwest. Thanks, Tony. In a time, Hooker.
was an exercise, English. Just an exercise. Couldn't pull the trigger. I couldn't shoot. And you would have been... Roberts had blanks in his gun. So did you, just in case you did shoot. And you figured ahead of time that I... I, I wouldn't be able to fire my gun. We didn't know for sure. But now you do. Look, kid, I know how much you want it, but you want it for the wrong reasons. This isn't a fraternity that inherits you because you had a blood relative who wore the shield. You don't understand. I do understand. And that's why I'm doing this now. I don't want you dead. I don't want anybody else dead. Make it your choice before I have to make it mine. You want me out? There are a lot of other things in life. A lot of things you'd be better at than me. Wearing a badge isn't one of them. had a stroke, was partially paralyzed. He's okay now. He's living in Jersey with his sister. And your brothers? Tony, he's my favorite. He was killed trying to hold a village in Anhol province. The rest of them are scattered. So how'd you wind up out here? After Nam, I just wanted to lay back, rub on some lotion, and soak up some rays. Besides, there's nothing to go home to. Why did you decide to be a cop? Because I found out that I can't do much of anything well, except be a soldier. Maybe someday I'll be the kind of cop Hooker would like us all to be. You know, you're not who you appear to be. You expecting Al Pacino? Why do you always have to come on so strong? I'm Sicilian. It's in my blood. Uh, look, I've got to get back. I promised my brother I'd give him a call and check in, let him know how I'm doing. And big brother concerned about little sister. Yeah, something like that. He's a cop. He works at Southwest Division. Ah, uh, look, Kelly, why don't we have dinner or something this weekend? I don't know whether that'd be a good idea. How am I going to get to know you better? Maybe you won't. OK, no dinner. Lunch, maybe. Brunch? Breakfast? Coffee in a sweet roll? Coffee black, hold the sugar, hold the sweet roll? Dinner, Saturday night. Sarge, wash out, right? Wash out. I know the rest of the guys feel the same as I do. We're sorry to see him go. English didn't have it, mister. Nice guy, tried hard. He didn't belong. <laughs> I guess there are times when all of us wonder whether we can measure up to your standards, whether we can cut it. You're not English, Canfield. You'll cut it. Tell that to my wife. She's worried about me. She is, is she? Well, we've had our troubles. But Lacey's a good woman. Four out of seven, four out of seven, one, four, one, three, three. Jefferson, see the woman, a family dispute. Four out of seven. Roger. That's it. <laughs>
Now, nobody wants to get involved in these sort of things, but I'm a God-fearing, church-going citizen. I just can't sit and watch TV like some people do. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you tell us what's going on? Well, it's that dirty White House there. I know he was beaten up because it's happened before. Now, you've got to do something before it becomes a case for county general. Yes, ma'am. Where do you live? I live in that yellow house with the flowers in the pots. I planted them myself. Real beautiful. Why don't you go back inside, back to your TV, and let's see what we can do. Family dispute. I'd like to win one of these for a change. If it's a wife beating, we have to help. Sometimes that's easier said than done, unless the woman presses charges. We're investigating a report of a disturbance. You're kidding. Here? Who said? One of your neighbors. Yeah, who? Which neighbor? Your wife around, sir? Now, what's that got to do with it? Your neighbor also thinks she heard screams from your wife. So... Oh. OK, if we come in. No, it ain't OK if you come in, not unless you got a search warrant. Now, how are we going to have a search warrant for investigating a simple disturbance? If you want to make a federal case of this, maybe we will go get a search warrant just to make it interesting. Why don't you just ask your wife to come to the door and we'll get this straightened out, sir? That's it. You see her and then you'll stop hassling me. We just want to make sure she's all right. Myra? Good afternoon, ma'am. We're investigating a report of a disturbance. Yeah, I heard. Well, I'm OK. Are you sure? Would you like to come out and talk to us? There's no need to talk. I, I got to go take care of my kid now. OK, sir. Nothing we can do but leave you with a warning. If anything's going on here, better put a lid on it before it gets out of hand. Don't you guys have things better to do than to come around here trying to intimidate taxpaying citizens? Yes, sir, we do, sir. Thank you for your concern for our time, sir. Probably never paid a day of taxes in his life. Like that, I'd still be playing. Good moves, Tommy! The kid's got good moves. Chips. Hey. Chicken Sarge. You trying to tell me something, McNeil? <laughs> Brian had mentioned to me that you were in the Green Berets. Yeah, early on. Where? Mekong Delta. Couldn't tell the bad guys from the good guys. Everybody wore black pajamas. <laughs> it's much simpler here. I was there near the end, Tiger Lair, 9th Infantry Fire Base. You special forces, weren't you, Mac? Yeah, Cambodia. But I spent the last three months of my tour staring at the paint peeling off the ceiling in a Saigon hospital. You don't want to make a habit of that. My old man used to say the difference between peace and war is in peace, sons bury their fathers. In war, fathers bury their sons. Some heavy numbers going down the Delta, Sarge. How long were you there? Too long. But that's part of the past for both of us. Right, Romano? You're right. It is, Sarge. It took me a while to put some things in the drawer, but it's over now. Hey, Dad! That's my son. <laughs> Fried chicken.
Sergeant. Mrs. Canfield, you want something to drink? No, thanks. Kids have eaten everything. You don't like me, do you, Sergeant? What gives you that idea? Oh, I just know. I'd like to find out why. You sure? Maybe I already do know. You saw me leave in the hospital parking lot with Eric Saxon, didn't you? I don't want to run your life, Mrs. Canfield. What you do is your own concern. But if I were you and my husband carried a gun, I'd be a bit more discreet. Sergeant, it really isn't what you think about Saxon and me. Jess and I, we were separated for seven months when he was working the Alaskan pipeline. And I was alone. I wasn't really sure if he was coming back. Some people can be alone. I can't. I, I don't want to hear about it, whatever it is. And I don't want to moralize. I'm sure you've had your reasons, but... I just want your husband's mind on his business. Not elsewhere. That way we can both keep him alive. Okay, okay. Give us five minutes. We're running low on chicken lace, and you and I are elected. Sure thing, Jennifer. I'll be right with you. What was happening before it's over? Behind me. I'd like to go forward from here with Jess. Truce? but only if I get first dibs on the chicken. <laughs> you got it, Sergeant. First in line. when you came back from Nam, Sarge? Yeah. Night I shipped out of Saigon, I swore I'd never fire another gun. Here I am a cop. You figure it. <laughs> I know what you mean. Whenever somebody asks me why I want a badge, I have a little trouble putting it into words. A commitment, maybe. I feel good about being out there, about being where I might be able to make a difference. Yeah, I think the rest of us feel the same. I'd been out of the academy maybe uh, three weeks. My partner and I were flagged down by a man running out of a synagogue. His wife was seven months pregnant. The kid decided not to wait. And we delivered that boy in the back seat of a black and white. And whenever I'm stuck for an explanation as to what this life is all about, I think of that baby. I have my answer. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa and Jennifer are there. Go by the phone. Get the Call kids. Units. Get the kids down. Come on. Stop. Here, let me help you. I'm OK. I'll be all right. You back away from him. Please do what he says. I'm just trying to stop the bleeding. You're going to be bleeding yourself, girl, if you don't back away. She's not in your way. She's just trying to help him. If I want any wise answers from you, I'm going to take you out and get some midnight conversation. That might not be such a bad idea, good looking. Travis, what the hell's keeping you so long? Ranger, can't do. Take the side. Follow me. Get the money out. Be back. Hurry up! What do you say, sweetness? You want to take a little ride? Is that supposed to be funny? It won't be if I decide to take you along. 
this here. Let's go. Now y'all stay put. <laughs> by more than a couple of feet. From where I stood, it seemed like a couple of inches. You know, I had a nice little talk with your wife earlier, when she first got to the picnic. You mean my ex, McNeil, my ex. OK, whatever. She's a terrific lady. She says she still loves you a lot, except for one thing. Yeah? Coming back on the force like you did when you didn't have to, and doing things like we just saw. She said you were insane, certifiable. Yeah? Well, I always thought sanity was overrated. two phases of the new academy training program. It's been tough, I know, because I made it tough. But if you're gonna survive out there in the streets, that's the way you've gotta be. This is the final phase of your on-the-job training program. You'll each be assigned a veteran partner to work with on a permanent basis. Remember, it's still probation. And it won't be easy. But you've had the guts and the dedication and the determination to make it this far. I'm willing to bet that you'll make it through the final lap with flying colors. The veteran officers that you rookies will be riding with are here today because they're survivors. Learn from them. Your partner will become your best friend. You'll get to know each other better than you know your wives or your girlfriend. He'll be responsible for your life, and you will be responsible for his. Don't you ever forget that. You should be proud of what you've done so far. I'm proud of you. You know your assignments? You know who you're partnered with? What are you waiting for? Hit the streets. Something wrong, Romano? You know, when all the other guys got their assignments, I didn't say anything. How come I didn't get one? You mean they didn't tell you? Tell me what? Look. I busted my back in pre-training. I thought I did better than any rookie in every class, every test, every drill. So why didn't I get a partner? Romano, you got a partner. You lucked out. You got me. Something wrong, Romano? No. No, not a thing, Sarge. I'd... Let's hit the bricks. Right. You got it, Sarge. 